another fascinating point along these same lines of real time evidence and confirmation of CPT and the flood itself. And I'm wondering if you could expand on it a little bit, the cold slabs. And so what appears to be a fulfilled prediction of the model, John, because the cold pre-flood ocean, if it sank only just 4,500 years ago, and the cold slabs that you pointed out in many different pictures using seismic tomography that they find deep within the earth going down miles are still cool. But if, if those were taken down there, John, millions of years ago, would they not have melted or at least they would have the temperature of the surrounding material? They would have, uh, heat would have been uh, conducted into those cold slabs and they would have have temperatures comparable to the surrounding rock after that long a time, yes. So would it be accurate then to say that what we find in terms of these massive slabs of cool rock that we find, <laughs> we find them deep within the earth, again, I mean, it's just amazing observations there. Would that be accurate to say that that is a confirmed prediction of aspects of CPT? Um, <clears throat> Well, I wouldn't, I would soften it a little bit, uh, be, mainly because there's, uh, there's so much controversy mm. still after, um, you know, 35 years after this was pretty well, you know, published and pretty well known in the earth science community of this, the situation that those images, seismic tomography images that I showed, that's, that's more or less been known throughout the earth science community for a good 30 years, if not 35 years. And back then it caused great consternation. Uh, people just couldn't, wouldn't, didn't want to believe it, couldn't believe it. Uh, and uh, and that, that state of affairs really hasn't changed. There are papers published without in the last year that are still uh, basically just desperation attempts to try to account for that that reality you know they they basically attempt to argue that the uh, the differences in seismic speed is is mainly due to a difference in chemistry uh, and uh, and yet they can't get that to work and you know they, they you know of course it rule out of hand that it's not temperature differences. So the, about the only thing, other thing they have is uh, composition di di differences, chemical differences. And they, you know, they're hard pressed to get that to work. And uh, so there are still fairly prominent, still prominent papers being published. Uh, just it hasn't ceased for the last 35 years because nobody, nobody can solve the problem, mainly because they're, it, it's, a absolutely off limits to understand it as a temp as temperature difference. So they've got to explain it some other way. And they the main thing they're they're focused on are these what in my images were those red features, and they have a special name for those now. And it's it's um, LLSVP. They're called LLSVPs. That stands for large low shear velocity provinces, uh, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's technical jargon that puts off the average person. They have no idea what that might be from those words, but basically it's, it's a blob of, of, of rock that has low seismic velocity. And in particular, the, the, the shear wave, shear waves uh, propagates slowly. The, 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 uh, <clears throat> Uh, compressive waves do as well. Compression waves do as well, but it's it's uh, c clear, more more uh, more evident with in the with the shear waves, seismic shear waves. So this these are called the uh, uh, large uh, low velocity shear low. See, yeah, low large low velocity shear wave provinces. And uh, you can Google that online and you would get a slew of papers that have been nonstop since the uh, 
since the 1990s. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, I guess that one of the main ones came out in 99, but they were already already very concerned prior to that time. So uh, so the secular community has no no good solution when, you know, from a catastrophic plate tank plate tectonics point of view, the sh solution should be obvious that these that these uh, low shear velocity features represent material from the core mantle boundary, which you might suspect has, you know, prior to the flood might have a, a little different chemistry from the rest of the mantle above it that's been was squeezed together by the sinking subducting slabs and now are concentrated in these two regions, one beneath Africa and the other beneath the uh, South Central Pacific. And uh, so this is this is probably the one of one of the top controversial issues still in the earth science community. Just what are these things? How did they arise? Uh, if they are, you know, they, of course, one obvious thing is if they are thermal, uh, and and if if they were buoyant, they should have uh, caused risen to the surface and caused all kinds of havoc. Uh, if the Earth is uh, more than a few thousand years old, so uh, I, I believe that when they first were formed during the flood, they did cause a lot of havoc. They are responsible for the huge number of seamounts in the Pacific Ocean, these volcanic output, these, these outpourings of lava that produced the, the 50,000 or so seamounts in the, on the Pacific floor. So uh, I believe it did produce uh, a lot of havoc when they, when they were first formed. Uh, but most of that, most of that lava that was produced has risen to the surface and, and, and turned to rock. But, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a huge problem. I, I one mm -hmm. of the biggest problems with solid earth uh, geophysics accounting for these features. So you're not compelled or convinced by the secular explanations for the existence of these cold slabs, John? No, and it, neither are the, you know, neither are the secular people. No, mm -hmm. they're, they're not... Nobody's satisfied with any with anything that's been proposed as yet. So I, you know, I'm not satisfied with any of their explanations either. Mm -hmm. I believe it's it's primarily uh, an expression of of the subduction uh, around the present day subduction zones that occurred uh, occurred during the flood, and it, and it represents. Uh, it, so we've got a ring of coal material that has. Uh, that has pressed together the the prior hot material that covered the core mantle boundary into these these features that are it, you know sort of look like squeezed up toothpaste. Would a good illustration to make the technical aspects of this point more understandable would it be akin to if I had a coffee, a hot coffee, my wife made me one, let's say, and she put an ice cube in it. Well, if I came back to the coffee a minute or two later, it's likely the ice cubes will still be there. They're not going to be melted. But if I came back five hours later, <laughs> well, then the ice cubes would be non-existent. So if the ice cubes are there on a hot coffee, it suggests they were just put there recently. The cold slabs deep within Earth uh, near the mantle, the fact that they're there and they haven't either warmed up or melted suggests that they were taken down there just thousands of years ago. Would, would that be accurate, John? Yeah, I think that's a reasonable uh, example, a reasonable illustration of what I'm talking about. 